Mm. Well, welcome to the show, Julia. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, I'm glad we're chatting because uh, I think you cover a topic um, and what you do as a wellness coach is so critical. I mean, we are hearing from women and have been hearing oh, since COVID began in, in particular, this, this increased concern over wellness. And um, I think there are elements of it that we've been hearing that are um, physical and then others that um, maybe are connected to uh, psychological. So what you do is you kind of talk about the confluence, like how those two things come together. So exactly. first, can you talk a little bit about who you are and what you do as it relates to wellness. Absolutely. So I am a digestive health coach, colon therapist, um, mm -hmm. and I've had a private practice for almost 40 years. I'm 60, mm -hmm. almost 67. And no, no, you are not. So wait, I, this, okay. No, people are not seeing you, but that I am stunned. You have to tell us your secrets. Is it good digestive health? <laughs> well, definitely one of them. I just wrote a whole book about it, Revolutionary Beauty. So they will learn everything, all, awesome. all of all of those secrets in that book. And our the book is about ageless beauty um, yeah. and 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 changing the culture of beauty in America to the understanding that beauty comes from within. Yeah. And that um, and that not only does it have to do with the power inside us and the use of our voice and the understanding that we are the source of our own power and our our own um, our own authentic self but the foundation for that is to actually feel rocket ship energy mm -hmm. and infinite optimism and joy yeah. and yeah. that comes from digestive health absolutely yeah. so yeah. That, that all goes together. My story is that I, I spent most of my first 20 years hospitalized. Mm. I was, doctors told my parents I would not live beyond 17. Wow. I was born with um, severe asthma, what, what, is, what became understood to be called environmental sensitivities. Mm. And I was treated in um, drug programs, experimental drug programs all over the country wow. where one organ failed after another due to the amount of pharmaceutical drugs that I was being given. Oh, wow. And I had failing kidneys, organs. I had rheumatoid arthritis, bleeding ulcers, migraines. Um, wow. Nothing, nothing worked. So when I was about 17, um, nearly 17, so sort of at the end of the road for me, um, my parents and I found a medical doctor who had been mentored by Paul Bragg um, and his family uh, was had studied environmental sensitivities. And I, you know, I was, as I said, I'm almost 67. I was born in 1955. This, so this is the sixties. Yeah. And in the sixties, no one understood that the chemicals going on in the environment were toxic. Mm. I was the canary in the coal mine. Um, mm. Paul Bragg understood this. Yeah. And he talked Rachel Carlson into writing Silent Spring. This is, you know, an understanding that he'd had for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so he mentored um, the medical doctor that I worked with. So this doctor said to my parents, you know, we've got to get her on a diet of organic food and no sugar, no wheat, no dairy, no processed foods. And we have to get her off all the pharmaceutical drugs. And they said, mm -hmm but the drugs are keeping her alive. And he said, they're killing her. So slowly we weaned me off the pharmaceutical medications and mm -hmm. that launched a 10 year healing journey for me. Um, that mm -hmm. included also a lot of deep psychological work to work with wounding that I'd experienced, uh, sexual abuse, um, mm -hmm. you know, which also women who, um, I haven't met a woman or man who's experienced sexual abuse who doesn't have digestive issues. So that's also mm. a huge piece of because th that wounding affects the gut. 
And so whether they're aware of that um, experience or not, that is going to affect their digestion. All trauma affects the gut. Yeah. So this began a, a journey for me, my own healing, to where I completely healed my mind and body. Mm. And then began to, to teach and work and open my practice. And then later on, you know, write my story and begin to write about it because I feel like, you know, my mission and my purpose in being here is to teach what I know and to share with all men and women, especially at this moment, women, that healing is possible yeah. and that healing are, it, and that healing starts with healing our digestion. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's talk a little bit. Um, I have a lot of questions. So let's talk first though, if we can, just so that people understand, how do you know if you have digestive health issues? Like what are some of the signs? And I'm not like, I know some people probably like, if you have a, a raging issue with yes. your digestion, you probably know about it, yes. but there's probably a lot of in between mm -hmm. in that yeah. spectrum. Um, how do you know if you are experiencing digestive health issues? What are some of the signs? Yeah, it's a beautiful question and all the pieces of it. So as you said, if you have something like I did, like bleeding ulcers, uh, mm -hmm. colitis, IBS, yep. um, SIBO, um, you, you know you've got gut issues. Right. Right. I'm going to talk about what those things actually are and some simple mm -hmm. solutions. Other than what people's doctors may be telling them, I'm, I will be sharing those in our interview. Okay. But for the, for the more uh, nuanced symptoms, so symptoms such as you can't lose weight, mm. you know, on a diet where you're, uh, you know, watching what you eat and you're exercising, the weight is not coming off yeah that's gut issues yeah um, that's inflammation we'll talk about inflammation as well inflammation yes. is the source of all disease inflammation begins in the gut so inflammation mm. is one so that that you know the the weight around the middle where you might have weight around the middle mm -hmm. um, that's another source of gut gas bloating mm -hmm. Being tired after you eat a meal instead of energized, mm. uh, that's a digestive issue. That's also lack of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. The stomach makes is supposed to make hydrochloric acid. Research shows that 75 and I believe more like 90% of people um, are not making hydrochloric acid in their stomach due to stress. So what happens is if we're not supplementing with a digestive enzyme that has hydrochloric acid in it, we're not digesting anything. What happens when we don't digest our food? It turns to fat, it turns to it becomes toxic, it causes allergies, it causes migraines, it causes mm. headaches, it mm. causes um, fatigue, it causes depression. Because after all, 90% of serotonin, which is the happiness hormone, the neurotransmitter, 90% right. of it is made in our gut, not our brain. Wow. So digestion is where happiness, joy, optimism comes from. Mm -hmm. there's, more, there's more nerves going from our brain to our gut than our gut to our brain, right? So our so that 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 um pathway that gut brain connection is a very very powerful one that has now been you know research you know when i was healing and studying we understood these things because of what we saw and what people like me experienced but the research had not validated our our observations and now it has which is mm -hmm. fantastic so now there's science that proves that uh, that our mood is based on our digestive health right and, and also our um, trauma affects the gut mm -hmm. so if you've had any level of trauma and it, it you know and whatever uh, you know trauma is whatever a person is experienced as traumatic you know to, yeah. it doesn't have to be something as dramatic as an abuse or um something that you can pinpoint it's something that you know one experiences as trauma that affects the gut because of the connection between the gut and the brain wow. so basically i have not met a, a a person 
you know, in my practice, whose gut issues do not affect their brain and who, and people who are, you know, now the profession of psychiatry and psychology is opening to understand how digestion plays a part in our mood, our brain, our ability to think and function. So if you're having brain fog, if you mm. can't concentrate, mm -hmm. if you think, what the heck is wrong with me? When mm -hmm. doctors tell me there's nothing wrong with me, you have digestive issues. Mm. And those can heal, but you are not crazy. Yeah. You're not crazy. Yeah. You know, People know when they don't feel well, when they don't feel like they're supposed to. Right. So I can say that they're not crazy. They just have an undiagnosed and untreated condition that can mm. heal. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So there was a lot in there and this a lot, so in so much information and so useful. I mean, I, it makes sense, right? But 90%, you said 90% of serotonin is made in your gut, not in your brain. And yes. that is the happiness, right? That that's is, what that's we know. Happy, joyful, you know, that sense that um, that when a problem shows up, which is life, right? Mm -hmm. That we can find a solution, that mm -hmm. we can calmly ask, that we can ask for help, that mm -hmm. we even can identify it as something separate from who we are. All yeah. of that has to do with our digestive health. So now yeah. you can see like what a big picture this is, right? And For sure. why it's so important yes. and, and why it's so important. And, and because of the amount of stress that people are under and with COVID exponentially, right? And it's mm -hmm. affected women more than anyone. So yeah. we have this huge level of stress that women are dealing with. Right. And, and also... Um, we're dealing with environmental toxicity in our planet. We're dealing with, mm -hmm. we're exposed to 2,500 chemicals a day. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. you know, and that is not the world our bodies were designed to live in. So yeah. it's a myth that we purge those chemicals all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. chemicals have to be purged in a step-by-step -step manner that I talk about in Revolutionary Beauty, that I talk about in all my books, because I believe that it is going to become as commonplace as washing our hands to understand mm -hmm. the cleansing and healing of digestion. This is the world we live in. And um, I do believe that our, our children are gonna change that, but on the way mm -hmm. we have to learn how to stay healthy in a toxic yeah. world um, and in a world where viruses are going to be constantly mutating. So yeah. what all we can do is to fortify our immune health. That is the best yeah. thing we can do. And our yeah. mental health, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so you mentioned before that hydrochloric acid being able your body produces this if it's if everything's working as it should, but there's yeah. a significant percentage of us Yes. that are not producing hydrochloric acid. That and are, this hardly, hard, I would say most people are not because, you know, because most people are tired after they eat. Yeah. Most people have fatigue, they have headaches, they have brain fog. Right, there's a word for it. We call it food coma. That's we, right. I mean, this is, it's part yeah. of how we function, right? So that is lack of digestive enzymes. And mm. because of my sensitivity, I created a line of supplements that were designed for sensitive people because there's wonderful supplements out there, but many of them are overly complicated. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are designed to use very simple things. Yeah. Um, and I believe that health can is actually a very simple process. And one of the things I've tried to do in my in all of my books, but mm -hmm. really in Revolutionary Beauty is to really make all of these concepts really accessible, really simple, really practical. Um, who has time to try to figure this out? You know, right. I wanted to make it really simple. So, yeah. so I, I created digestive, I created a line of, you know, digestive enzymes that have uh, exactly the amount of hydrochloric acid that most of us need mm -hmm. because when we you know for me when I discovered digestive enzymes it was just a game changer yeah. I had never really understood how people could eat food get up and just feel fabulous I had never had that experience because of my right. digestive issues so right. you know I sort of created things that helped and 
And although I created them for sensitive people, guess what? We're all sensitive right now. Right, right. So, so yeah. So just so, um, as and again, this is a question as someone who is not that knowledgeable about this. So a pop, my, a please excuse my ignorance. No, no. But the no, digestive no. enzymes; those are things that you can find in probiotics, right? Those. No, when thank you. you. That's a great question. Great question. Yeah. Probiotics are different from from digestive enzymes. Oh, okay. Really different. Okay. And that's a wonderful question because you know you're you're not alone to think that they're the same thing. A probiotic is a bacteria, a, a healthy bacteria that we that have in our gut or that we should have in our gut because that's another thing most of us do not have in our gut, right? Mm -hmm. Because our gut microbiome, the good stuff, that's what I'll make it simple, the good stuff in our gut, we have 90% less of it than our great grandparents. 90% less. How is that? Is that just because the food that has changed? That is chemicals in our food, chemicals mm. in our farmland, chemicals mm. in our soil, chemicals in our, the soil has been degraded to a place where, and then our hands are not in the dirt. Right. So you and I, we, we do what we do. We're, right. Our hands are not in the dirt. Kids' hands are not in the dirt. Right. So 90% less. So why mm. did, you know, so why are we dealing with the health issues that we are in America and the world because of what's going on in our food chain, what's going on in farming, what's going mm -hmm. on in the fact that we're not all eating organic food. And then our, you add stress to that, right? You mm -hmm. add huge amounts of stress to that. So mm -hmm. probiotics are a healthy form of bacteria that we should make, but most of us do not, or we don't make enough. You can get it from fermented foods like sauerkraut, but many of my uh, gut sensitive, my digestive sensitive patients, which again has become all of us, mm -hmm. you know, they, they can't even necessarily digest fermented foods because that causes a lot of gas and bloating. So probiotics become a simple way to do it. So mm -hmm. food enzymes are a whole separate category. Okay. Food enzymes are made um, in our, they start in our mouth. They're made mm -hmm. uh, different enzymes, um, make digest different forms of food. So okay. there's a, a digestive enzyme that, that digests fat, one that digests protein, one that, dig that digests carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And the one that digests, the one that we were talking about, which is the one that digests protein, hydrochloric acid that's made in our stomach. That's the one that people are the most deficient in. Mm. And so most people are protein deficient. What mm. is it? What really is the foundation of hormone health and mood health? Ample protein. What is the mm. antidote for sugar cravings and carb cravings? Adequate protein. Mm. Women should be getting 100 grams of digestible protein a day, not less. Mm -hmm. And most people are not even digesting what they're eating. Mm. So those food enzymes are so key. They're so simple to take and they're so key. And that's a game changer in, in actually assimilating the food we're eating. Yeah. And then if people have trouble digesting, then there's other ways to get really good healthy foods like bone broth and protein drinks. Mm -hmm. But um, adequate protein is really key to mental health. It's key to hormone health, which is both of those really important for women. Right. So, okay. I'm going to ask you a question that I don't know if there's a simple answer to. Okay. So um, let's see. <laughs> How do you know, let's say you start, you know, you, you, COVID has been this time that we have hear, heard from so many women that they are just emotionally, just psychologically drained. Yes. Now, obviously there are lots of reasons for them to be that way. It's not, yes. this is Absolutely. not like an imagined thing, right? Yes. Not there's, at all. There's, there's lots of reasons for, for women to feel that way. So how do you know if what's going on with you mentally is related to just what's happening in the world and, and in your life and, and maybe just what's happening or if it could be related to digestive health. Are there any signs that women can look to 
Um, should you just start taking um, a digestive enzyme? Like what, how do you know? Good, that's a really good question. So the answer is, if a person is not feeling joyful, energetic, optimistic, and hopeful, right? they have digestive health issues, even in mm. this world. Because mm. re remember when you're a teenager, yeah, and you had that sense that everything was possible. Mm. I have kids in their 20s, and they both believe this. Mm -hmm. you know, I raise them, so they have really good you know, the good digestive health, good diets. Mm -hmm. um, they believe that anything is possible and everything that's going on can be fixed and healed. Yeah. That's, that's an app. They have a sense that when problems show up, they can deal with them. Yeah. That's how we are supposed to be. Yeah. Even in this crazy world where I admit, you know, my heart flips when I hear the news mm -hmm. and, um, and I understand that. So between so, but what I'll also know is, okay, time to step away from the news, do my deep breathing, change what I can change, mm -hmm. focus on what I can focus on, ask for spiritual guidance, ask for help, give away to God or spirit what I cannot change. So for all those people out there who are feeling so overwhelmed, so exhausted, so depressed, and so burdened, that's a moment that it's time to step away from the news and focus on your digestive health. Yeah. That's the best thing you can do for yourself and mm -hmm. your family and the world crises. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk then a little bit about, let's go a little bit deeper if we can on the digestive health. Okay. Yes. So we know we now have made the connection between the digestive health and your mental health and that frequently, and for a lot of us, it's probably, it could be our moods and what's going on with us could be related to our digestive health. Let's say you have that light bulb moment, aha, it is my digestive health. What should I do? As, as, as a woman who like has that moment of recognition, what do I do next? Do I change okay. my diet? Do I start to take certain supplements? What do I do? Okay, that's a great question. And um, you know, all of my books were written for people like yourself who mm -hmm. are not expert in this. Right, that was, right. That's my job, right? And it's and there's step by step programs that are so easy, mm -hmm. so simple, and so practical right. to follow. Anyone can do them, and they do not cost much money. They're mm -hmm. made for any woman and any budget. Mm -hmm. including revolutionary beauty everything in it is made for like do it yourself like you can i healed myself by myself at home because there weren't even people like me to go to mm -hmm. i created books and programs so that any woman anywhere in the country can help herself without spending a ton of money or making it over complicated. Right. So, you know, if you want a guide because that's what's tricky, right? Is to feel like you're all alone out there. You don't even know where to start, but anywhere you want to jump into any of my books, start right there because they're simple and they're easy. Yeah. And they come in, you know, you can listen to them. I mean, women are busy. Who has time to read? So you yeah. can just listen to them wash over you and mm -hmm. start at start at the beginning, which is I, I would say the most important thing is to yes, start with taking digestive enzymes, start with getting enough digestible protein mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. form of, you know, and to start eating as clean as possible. So organic whenever you can find it. Okay. That is, that is key to um, eliminate processed foods as much as possible. Okay. To eat whole fresh foods as much as possible. And instead, what I like to teach, you know, what I like to teach my clients is instead of, all the things that they think they're going to have taken away. I start with adding. I start with adding things because I'm getting enough nutrition. Then your body is able to, all of a sudden, the cravings just calm down. Yeah. So that the sugar and carb cravings that drive us, those, those demons that get us at night, mm -hmm. especially when we're emotionally overwhelmed. If you can just get some digestible protein, whether it's bone broth, Mm -hmm. a protein drink. Mm -hmm. I have um, 
on my website, julialoggins.com. I've got sugar-free, gluten-free, dairy-free, monk fruit sweetened protein powders that are just the backbone of of a of busy woman's life. Mm-hmm. So that you always have something on the go with you wherever right. you are. Right. And you know, it's just to start right there, drinking enough water, deep breathing. Yeah. And then coming back to looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I'm going to be okay because you really will. And to know that there really is a program, you know, we'll talk a bit more about cleansing, but as far as like where to start, where to start with just getting as much whole, Mm -hmm. fresh, organic food as possible. I love and, that. So yeah. wait, just so we're all clear again, I, 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 um, I'm think of me as like the ignorant person on all of this, not knowledgeable. When you say whole fresh foods, yes. does that mean if I buy vegetables, I don't cook them? Thank right? you. That's a great question. Yeah. So no, it doesn't have to be raw. In fact, most people have a really hard time digesting raw food. Oh, so okay. I, yes. And after all, we're not cows, right? So even <laughs> you don't have some, some of us sometimes food. feel like cows. <laughs> I know. And you know, I've also been so puffy in my life from inflammation that I wanted to, you know, I felt like that when I looked in the mirror, I wanted to pop myself. Right. So, you know, I I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's even though I healed on a, a vegan diet, that was um, my experience is that it was a, it was a short term because it was a few years and it was really when i say a vegan diet it was mostly juices i was mm-hmm. drinking quarts of green juice quarts mm-hmm. of wheatgrass juice a day because i couldn't digest anything else mm-hmm. so i had a digestive system that was truly non-functioning yeah, yeah. so it had to be put back together with juices mm-hmm. but what I experience and what I see with people trying vegan diets, and I'm not against them because I think there's no one way for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I really believe if we're not getting enough digestible protein, right. then what happens is even on a vegan diet, we're, we're craving those sugars and carbs. Yeah. So, um, yes, cook those, you know, your vegetables, cook, steam your vegetables, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. cook and steam, um, grill, roast, yep. anything that's, that you know, that, and I do things in batches on Sunday. Yep. You know, like that's kind of what busy women need to do. We need to cook on in one day, get things yep. ready for the week. Yep. Where, you know, whether it's a lot of pieces of chicken or I'm the slow cooker, the cro- the old crock pot, right? Mm-hmm. Crock pot to me is a friend to women because mm. you can throw things in it. Yeah. You can't lose. Yeah. I, I put it on at night before I'm um, before I go to bed, and in the morning I wake up and I have a stew or a soup or something mm-hmm. that's filled with thermos, mm-hmm. so that I, there's food, so that it's easy. So the answer to that is raw food only if you feel like you're digesting it, which means it's not making you gassy or bloated. Yeah. Otherwise, cook your food and drink your juices because yeah. that's green juices are. Are, are full of chlorophyll mm-hmm. a juice like wheatgrass juice is one atom different than human blood so it's almost like a transfusion really? and that was that, i that is a lot of what you see here in in me a lot of my my own beauty yeah team is those kinds of green juices every day particularly mm-hmm. wheatgrass juice yeah so, that that's a good place that's a good place to start keep it simple you know mm-hmm. a few a few different things we we don't need to have 10 different things on our plates our bodies aren't really used to digesting that mm-hmm. i talk about food combining in my books which is the understanding that we do not digest proteins and carbohydrates together mm-hmm. so all the meals even ethnic meals that we've all grown up with are yeah. combinations of of uh, foods that don't digest well. And mm. that means that we're gonna gain weight. So that, mm. you know, that that joke that, oh, if I eat a pizza, I gain five pounds overnight, no joke, really yeah. happens. Yeah. It really happens. So, okay, so it sounds like everyday woman like me, yes. what we can do is we can start to incorporate 
whole fresh foods into yeah. our diet, which can be cooked. Yes, they can. those vegetables can be cooked. Does not have, they do not have to be raw. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit. You mentioned cleanses. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about the value of a cleanse, how a cleanse can play a role in this? Yes, absolutely. So a cleanse can play a role. And, and again, I talk about them so that it's really easy and simple because there's so much information out there in the world about cleanses and about yeah. cleansing that it's oh, yes. very confusing, right? Yes. So I wanted to make it safe and simple. Yeah. And, um, safe and simple so to do a cleanse that can mean anything from just eliminating sugar wheat dairy processed foods that's the beginning of a cleanse yeah. it doesn't have to happen all at once right. i really help women in my books make this a simple process so that you're not your cravings aren't overwhelming you it, there's mm -hmm. willpower has basically nothing to do with food and lifestyle choices that are sustainable yeah it really all has to do with self-love and self-acceptance mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. kindness to ourselves because yeah. when we're really nourished we really don't have those cravings so yeah. forget the willpower there's no white neckling it it doesn't work and it isn't necessary slowly yeah. over time we nourish ourselves and we digest our foods and we start with simple cleanses and then we build up to um, what I call it. It can be a fast, can be as simple mm -hmm. as a diet a day of liquid nutrition, green mm -hmm. juices, bone broth, protein mm -hmm. drink. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be an all or nothing. I talk about fasting light, which is mm -hmm. just a day of liquid nutrition. Do you know that our digestion takes more energy than running a marathon? It's the most wow. exhausting thing for our body to do is digest mm -hmm. solid food. So wow. doing days of liquid nutrition are hugely energizing and renewing. I do mm -hmm. a day every week, a fasting day on green mm -hmm. juices and bone broths. And mm -hmm. then and then once a month, I'll do three days. During a year, I'll do longer cleanses and fasts. Mm -hmm. And I always accompany those with um, detoxification protocols that eliminate all the symptoms that we get when we're detoxing, like headaches and brain yeah. fog and feeling fluey. That's really important. And I talk about those in my books. I talk about it in Revolutionary Beauty. One of the things I wrote Revolutionary Beauty for is to make cleansing protocols very simple and uncomplicated for the everyday woman who's mm -hmm. never really understood what colon cleansing means and yes. why we need to do it and yes. how to do it safely and simply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I well, I will be pre-ordering Revolutionary uh, Beauty. I hope that everyone else also checks it out. We'll have information for them to um, go find that. Thank you so much for what you're doing and and helping to educate women and other people about about gut health and um and and hopefully heal both mentally and physically. We thank so much you. appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for your wonderful questions.